Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to begin with our reading lesson one. Our standard for this reading lesson is that the student will be able to ask and answer questions about key details in a text that's read aloud or information that's presented orally or through other media. That means you'll be able to ask and answer questions about something that somebody reads to you. Okay? The, our essential questions. This is what we're trying to learn. How do I ask and answer questions to better understand a story that is read aloud to me? What are the parts of a book? We need to be able to figure out how to hold a book and what parts to use. What do authors and illustrators do? Well, first we need to find out what they are. Then we'll find out what they do. Okay. Now, what is a wolf? Does anybody know what a wolf is? Have you ever seen a wolf? Okay, think about what a wolf is. What does a wolf look like? What does a wolf eat? Okay, those are some important questions. All right, today we're going to read a book, and the title of the book is Wolf. The author is Becky Bloom, the illustrator is Pascal Biet. All right? But before we begin to read our story, we need to find out about what is a book, what are the parts of the book, that kind of thing. Okay? So the first thing we need to know is the front cover. The front cover is the front of the book. This is the front of this book. All right? The back cover is the back of the book. So if I turn it around... This is the back cover of the book. The spine holds the book together. Now, a spine, we have a spine. It's a backbone. It holds us together. And the spine of a book holds the book together. This is the spine. Okay, the front cover has the name of the book on there. All right, so the book that we're reading... Today is Wolf, so Wolf would be on the front cover of the book, all right? It also has the name of the person who wrote the book, all right? This author is Becky Bloom, so Becky Bloom's name would appear on the front cover. illustrator's name also goes on the front of the book. That's who drew the pictures for the book. So the front cover of the book has the title, the author's name, and the illustrator's name. The title also appears on the spine because when you go to the library to check out books and they're on the shelf, all you see is the spine. And so that way you can read and see here it is on this one. I turn it this way, it says wolf. So the name of the book is on the front cover and it's on the spine. Okay, now I said, I told you who the author was. The author of the story that we're going to read today is Becky Bloom. Now we see in this picture, what does this look like the little girl's doing? She's writing a book. So the author is the person who writes the book. They write the words. They think of an idea that they want to write. We need for all flag boys to report to the gym at this time. We need all flag boys to report to the gym at this time. The person who writes the book first has to come up with an idea. What do I want to write about? And then they sit down and they use a pencil or a pen and they write the words. Okay? The illustrator is the person who makes the pictures for the book. And we can see that this person is at an easel and he's been working on picture ideas to go with the book. So the illustrator has to, uh, they have to know what the book is about so that they'll draw pictures that go with the story. So if this is a story about a wolf, 
the illustrator is probably not going to be um, drawing a picture of school in there, maybe. So it's going to be whatever the illustrator draws will be pictures that go with or tell more about the story that the author has written. All right. Now, if, when we open up a book on the inside, we can find lots of books, not all, but lots of them have a table of contents. A table of contents is a list of the stories or the chapters that are in a book. And it tells you what page that story or that chapter begins on. Now, this book that I'm looking at here is called Winter Sports. Okay? If you wanted to read about sledding, which is a winter sport, you could turn to page three. You wouldn't have to turn every single page to find something. If you wanted to read about hockey, we just let our finger go all the way across and we see the number 21. So we would turn to page 21 to read about hockey. If we wanted to read about skiing, we would turn to page 10. Ice skating, page 15. So the table of contents helps us find things in the book. Okay, now let's go over it all together. The parts of the book, we have the front cover, that's the front of the book. Here, we'll do this. There's the front cover. Oops, the sticky's about gone off this. Okay, that's the front cover. Then we have the back cover. All right, that's the back of the book. We have the spine. The spine is what holds the book together. It's right in the middle. If you open the book all the way, the spine is right in the middle. Right here in the middle. That's what holds it all together. All right? And the title, here's the title of our story, Wolf. Right here. And now, not every book has a table of contents. This one does not. Tomorrow, when we review the parts of the book, I'll show you a book that we're going to be reading from that has a table of contents. So for today, front cover, back cover, spine, title. Okay? Let me take these off. And now that we know the parts of the book, we will read the book. Okay, let me get set up because I want you to be able to see the pictures in the book. Becky Bloom, illustrated by Pascal Biet. After walking for many days, a wolf wandered into a quiet little farm. He was tired and hungry. His feet ached, and he had only a little money that he kept for emergencies. Then he remembered. Wait, there's a farm outside this village, he thought. I'll find some food there. All right, now look, there's the wolf. He does look kind of tired. As he peered over the farm fence, he saw a pig, a duck, and a cow reading in the sun. The wolf had never seen animals read before. I'm so hungry that my eyes are playing tricks on me, he said to himself. Have you ever seen anybody, an, a wolf, read? I haven't. 
but he really was very hungry and didn't stop to think about it for long. The wolf stood up tall, took a deep breath, and leaped at the animals with a howl. Oh! Chickens and rabbits ran for their lives, but the duck, the pig, and the cow didn't budge. What does budge mean? It means they didn't move. What's that awful noise? Complained the cow. I can't concentrate on my book. Just ignore it, said the duck. See here, everybody's reading. The wolf did not like to be ignored. No one does. What's wrong with you, growled the wolf. Can't you see I'm a big and dangerous wolf? I'm sure you are, replied the pig. But couldn't you be big and dangerous somewhere else? We're trying to read. This is a farm for educated animals. Now, be a good wolf and go away, said the pig, giving him a push. The wolf had never been treated like this before. Educated animals. Educated animals, the wolf repeated to himself. This is something new. Well then, I'll learn how to read too. And off he went to school. The children found it strange to have a wolf in their class. But since he didn't try to eat anyone, they soon got used to him. The wolf was serious and hard working, and after much effort, he learned to read and write. So he had to work at it, didn't he? Soon he became the best in the class. Okay. Feeling quite satisfied, the wolf went back to the farm and jumped over the fence. I'll show them, he thought. He opened his book and began to read. Run, wolf, run. See, wolf, run. You've got a long way to go, said the duck, without even bothering to look up. And the pig, the duck, and the cow went on reading their own books, not the least impressed. The wolf jumped back over the fence and ran straight to the public library. He studied long and hard, reading lots of dusty old books, and he practiced and practiced until he could read without stopping. They'll be impressed with my reading now, he said to himself. The wolf walked up to the farm gate and knocked. Okay, has he been knocking? No, he's just been jumping over the fence. He opened the three little pigs and began to read. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. One day, their mother called them and told them, Stop that racket, interrupted the duck. You have improved, remarked the pig, but you still need to work on your style. The wolf tucked his tail between his legs and slunk away. How do you think the wolf is feeling right now? He's been working so hard. He's been to school and he's been to the library and practiced his reading, but they're still not impressed. But the wolf wasn't about to give up. He counted the little money he had left, went to the bookshop and bought a splendid new book. His first very own book. He was going to read it day and night, every letter and every line. He would read so well that the farm animals would admire him. Okay, see, what do you think everybody's thinking with the wolf in the store buying a book? They all look kind of surprised. Okay, here we are, we're back at the farm. Ding dong! rang the wolf at the farm gate. He lay down on the grass, made himself comfortable, took out his new book, and began to read. He read with confidence and passion, 
And the pig, the cow, and the duck all listened and said not one word. Each time he finished a story, the pig, the duck, and the cow asked if he would please read them another. Wow, things are different now, aren't they? Look, all the animals are really paying attention. So the wolf read on, story after story. One minute, he was Little Red Riding Hood. The next, a genie emerging from a lamp. And then, a swashbuckling pirate. This is so much fun, said the duck. He's a master, said the pig. Why don't you join us on our picnic today, offered the cow. How do you think the wolf feels now? I think the wolf is probably feeling a lot better because he wanted to be a part of their group. And now he is. And so they all had a picnic. The pig, the duck, the cow, and the wolf. They lay in the tall grass and told stories all the afternoon long. We should all become storytellers, said the cow suddenly. We could travel around the world, added the duck. We can start tomorrow morning, said the pig. The wolf stretched in the grass. He was happy to have such wonderful friends. Okay, that's the end of that story. All right. Now, give me just a second to get it back up here. Now let's go over um, the story a little bit. Now, the wolf wanted something at the beginning of the story. What did he want? He wanted to be able to read. When he went to that farm, he wanted to be able to read just like the pig, the duck, and the cow did. So, uh, was he able to do that? Yes, he was. He did learn how to read. Was it easy for him to learn how to read? Raise your hand if you said yes. I'm not going to raise mine. Because it wasn't easy for him to learn to read. Um, what are some of the things that he had to do to learn to read? Okay, if you said he had to go to school, that was one thing he did. He went to school to learn to read. He did what else? What else did he do? He went to the public library and he checked out books and he learned to read even better. Was that it? No, he had to do something else. And this is something that we all need to do. He had to practice. He practiced over and over and over. He went to that bookstore and he bought a book. And then he carried it home and he practiced that same book over and over and over. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to practice until we learn to read. All right, is this story about something that could really happen? No, it's not. How do you know? Okay. Well, this story was about a wolf a cow, a duck, and a pig. And every one of those animals were talking. And they were reading. Can animals really talk? Ducks, cows, pigs, and wolves? No. What about read? Can they read? No, they can't. So that tells us this story was something that somebody just made up. Okay? It's not true. Sometimes we read stories that we know they aren't true. It's just for entertainment. Okay? All right, so we have learned the parts of the book today. And we've read a story. And we know that this is the front cover, the back cover, the spine. This is the title. We've learned that the author is the person who writes the story. 
And the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures or paints the pictures or makes the pictures. So that's what the illustrator does. And we also learned about a table of contents, but we'll learn a little bit more about that tomorrow. So this year we are going to become readers, just like the wolf. Okay, great job, boys and girls.